Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot Windows 11 and OpenSUSE. So first off, open a web browser and go to get.opensuse.org. And the one we're going to be doing is Tumbleweed. And Tumbleweed is the roll and release version of OpenSUSE. And you can see the blurb here. It's leading edge, simple to use, safe, plays nice with your hardware. It's powerful, good for gaming, stuff like that. But I'm sure you already know that because that's why you're on this video in the first place and you just want to learn how to dual boot. So we're going to go to the download page and there's various options available. And the one I'm going for is a 64 bit system and I'm going for the network image. So I'm just going to click download there. It's a small download, so you don't need a large USB drive to install this one onto. Uh, whilst we're talking about that, let's go and get the software we need to create the USB drive. And the software we're going to be using for creating the USB drive is called Rufus. So it's rufus.ie. And if you scroll down to the download, you can just download the executable here. And we're just going to click this. And that downloads in the top as well. So now we can close down our browser once this finishes downloading. And what we're going to do first of all is we're going to create the bootable USB drive. So the way we do that is we go to our downloads folder and we double click on the Rufus. You need to uh, insert your USB drive at this point. Um, if there's any data on there that you want to keep, copy it off because it will be wiped as part of this process. A message will appear asking you whether you are sure. And what we're going to do is pick the USB drive. You can see it's already selected mine, 16 gigabytes. I'm going to select the ISO image. So that's the OpenSUSE tumbleweed. We're not going to do any persistence. We're going to leave everything else as defaults and we're just going to click start. When the message appears, just select OK and choose the recommended option. And as I mentioned before, all data will be destroyed on this device. So if there's anything you want to keep, cancel out now. But if there's not, click OK. When it's finished, um, you can take out your USB drive. So what we need to do now is make space for OpenSUSE on your drive. Now I'm assuming you've got a OneDrive system for this uh, dual boot guide. So what you need to do is go to your start menu and you're going to type disk and GMT. And when you see this create and form a hard disk partitions, you're going to click that. And then what you're going to do is you see I've got this drive here. I'm going to right click make sure it's your Windows drive um, and you're going to do right click and you're going to shrink it and then you're going to choose an amount to shrink it by so in this case I want the, the maximum you can do is in this case 396 meg so whatever it says the maximum is you can do that amount but in my case I'm just going to have 150 gig a byte so I'm going to shrink like that and you can see I've now got this unallocated space. We're now in a position we can install OpenSUSE into this space here. And that's what we're going to do next. Before you go any further, you should seriously consider making a backup of all important files and your Windows partition, just in case you make a mistake. Reboot your computer and leave the USB drive plugged in. Normally, with an installation guide, you have to press a function key to bring up the boot menu. And this is usually F7, F9, F12, etc. But for OpenSUSE, it seems to find the USB drive without doing this, and the following menu should appear. If, however, the menu doesn't appear automatically, then do what I have done here and click the relevant boot key. Now, this differs from manufacturer to manufacturer, and you can Google for the correct key for your make and model. But when this screen appears, choose your USB drive. So you should now see this screen, and you will want to select the installation option. You should now enter the name of the Wi-Fi you wish to connect to and choose the authentication type. For me, this was WPA PSK and it probably is for you as well. Now you all need to enter your Wi-Fi password. You won't see me do this because it appears in plain text and I don't want the world to know my Wi-Fi password. The computer then goes into a six stage boot sequence and this can take a few minutes. A message will appear stating that to use the selected repository, a matching boot image is required. 
All you have to do here is click yes to continue. This will download the necessary files and your machine will enter the same boot sequence again. You will have to enter your Wi-Fi network name again, select the relevant authentication method as before and then to enter your Wi-Fi password. We are finally at the real installation screen and the first thing you will need to do is choose your installation language from the drop down and then your keyboard layout. Click next to move to the next screen. You can now choose the list of repositories to download files from. I recommend leaving the default options and simply click next to move to the next screen. At this point you can choose which desktop environment you wish to install. There's KDE, GNOME, XFCE and a basic desktop option. For this guide I am going to choose the GNOME desktop environment, but feel free to pick the one that suits you most and click next. Now comes the semi tricky bit, but if you've shrunk your windows partition already and left an empty space then it isn't too much of an ordeal. First of all click the guided setup button. You can see in my case it has found three disks. The first disk I want to leave alone as that is where I store all my real files. And I don't want OpenSUSE accidentally overwriting them so I uncheck the box. The second disk is where Windows lives and so I check this box instead. And the third disk is the USB drive so I leave that unchecked as well. When I click next it asks what I want to do with existing partitions. I want to do absolutely nothing with them so I change the top option to do not modify and the bottom option to do not modify. The middle option is already greyed out. Now when I click next it asks whether I want to use logical volume management, LVM for short. And if you do you can check the box but I'm going to leave it blank. And you can see you can also encrypt the disk but again I have left this blank. It now asks what file system I want for the root file system. This is the main partition that will host my OpenSUSE Linux. It will use the free space left empty after shrinking windows. The default file system is BTRFS and so I'll accept that option and I have left enable snapshots checked as well. You can uncheck this if you wish. It also has a prepare separate swap partition checkbox which is checked by default. I have ticked the enlarged to RAM size for suspend as this enables you to suspend your session. You will now see a summary of what is going to happen. If you think you have made a mistake then hit the cancel button and repeat the setup again. If you are ready to proceed click next. You can now choose where you are on the map from the drop downs provided. This will set the clock to the correct time. Click next and you can set up your default user. Enter your name and choose a username. Enter your password and repeat it. You should probably uncheck the box for automatic login as I see this as a security risk. By default the administrator or root password will be the same as the user password, but you can uncheck this box if you wish and set a different password for the administrator. I have left it checked. If you choose a weak password it will let you know and you can either accept the warning or go back and change the password to something more secure. I wouldn't worry too much, you can always change it again later after the installation is complete. The installation will now begin. This can take quite a while as it has to download all the files from the internet so it would allow 30 to 40 minutes or maybe a bit longer. When the process is complete a message will appear stating the machine will reboot. At the point it gets to the boot screen remove the USB drive. When the menu appears you can choose to boot into OpenSUSE or you can choose Windows from the menu provided. If you choose OpenSUSE you can log in by clicking your username and entering the password. And that is it, you have successfully dual booted Windows and OpenSUSE. In the next guide I'm going to show you how to set up OpenSUSE. But for now, that is the end of the video.